So what is B2B all about? B2B is about enabling businesses to communicate with each other. For example, you can think of a large retailer trying to, ha uh, trying to build up his shopping inventory or, uh, or the holiday inventory for the Thanksgiving period, uh, say Walmart. Walmart would talk to all of his suppliers, make sure it has all the inventory in place right up front so that all of us can have a beautiful holiday shopping experience. Walmart talking to his suppliers is business to business communication for you. Let's take a closer look at a few of these B2B verticals or industries and what does it really take to enable these industries and how partners in these industries can actually communicate with each other. So we'll start with healthcare. Say you walk into a hospital and you, you want to be treated for some particular ailment or disease uh, you have or I have in this particular case. Uh, your hospital would want to know what is your past medical record so that it can actually better treat your case. For that, it would actually talk to uh, the other hospitals or the HL7 protocol over the wire protocol, which is minimal lower level, uh, lower level protocol, and get all, this rec all, your, all the records for you so that it can actually better treat your case. It can then also talk to your insurance provider to know what, what's the insurance package you have so that after the treatment, it can actually bill you appropriately. So in the process, it will again use the X12 and Edifact protocol. HS7 and MLLP are predominantly used only in the healthcare space, whereas X12 and Edifact tend to be more cross-cutting. And as we talked about, it will talk to the health information exchange systems, uh, talk to electronic medical records, also the clinical data repository to get all the information it can so that it knows all your past record to treat you better. Since there are multiple business entities involved, all of those entities, be it a hospital, be it an insurance provider, need to be represented in the, in the system in some form or the other. These entities are normally referred to as partners, and the contract between them is typically referred to, an, referred to as an agreement. The management of these partners and agreements is what we refer to as trading partner management. And of course, this is patient healthcare information. So you do not, it's, it's, it's very sensitive information, so you need to have the right authentication in place so that the, only the right people have the right level of access. You want to actually describe various business processes to both onboard a patient onto the hospital, to bill him, to treat his case, to pass the medical file from one, uh, one department to another. For all of this, you would actually be defining business processes. So you need basic business process capabilities in the system. Also, since disparate systems are talking to each other, you need to have basic mess uh, message mediation in the form of validation, enrichment, transformation, uh, batching, and so forth. Batching, again, if you want to group your messages together before sending it out to your partner, you can, of course, do that. And now that messages are flowing through the system, you want to be able to uh, see whether your overall system is healthy or not. So you need to have troubleshooting data in place so that you can actually extract that view and get a meaningful, make meaningful use out of it. So yes, you need to have tracking data in place. And in case something does go wrong, you need to have the mechanism to recorrect and actually resubmit the message so that your intention actually goes through. This is what it takes to actually enable the healthcare space. I'm pretty sure there are better subject matter experts out here you, who can say, Harish, you have two more points missing, but yes. Now switching gears to the banking space or banking vertical, I want to transfer money to my friend or to a colleague. Those two banking institutions will now come into picture. They, and they want to have a transaction going between them to actually enable my intent of transfer, transferring money to my particular my, my friend or colleague. Swift.org is one such institution or body who, which standardizes how this communication or flow actually happens. So to enable this vertical, you would need to integrate with Swift. You want to integrate with clearing houses and payment gateways so that you can actually do this integration. Uh, mobile, uh, again, you have uh, various disparate systems. One bank could be saving its data in SQL versus another one could be in SAP. And as Sami talked about, we will have out-of-box connectors in place so that that can happen. Today, as in today's, uh, day, um, in today's world, 
you withdraw money, you actually immediately get a notification on your mobile saying, OK, so this much cash or this much transaction has happened. So you, of course, need mobile integration to be happening. And as we talked about, again, business entities are involved. So you need to have trading partner management to both manage those business entities and the contract or the agreement between them. And again, authentication, business process management, mediation, all of these form common aspects to enable this particular pillar also. Moving to manufacturing, say Boeing wants to actually assemble a 787. From my know-how, Boeing actually talks to 1,200 suppliers or 12,000 of suppliers to actually get all the parts and then assemble the Boeing 787. In order to do that, it actually talks to its partner over Rosetta Net, also X12 and Edifact. And this communication happens with all of its suppliers and distributors. Also in the manufacturing area or in the manufacturing vertical, they have this common term called componentization, wherein they break a bigger chunk into smaller pieces and then uh, handle them individually. You also need to make sure you are actually then integrating this individual components and then making a full plane out of it. Again, training partner management, business rules, authentication, and all of this become common uh, factors to enable this vertical. Moving to retail. Again, going back to the previous example, Walmart will actually talk to its suppliers over X12 and Edifact. And this communication can happen over AS2 and AS4. AS3 can also be used. Not, did not catch up a whole lot, so I'm, I avoided that here. Uh, you, you integrate with e-commerce and your suppliers and distributors. And again, the common factors to enable this particular pillar. Moving to insurance. You want insurance? Your insurance provider will talk to your third party provider over a card, X12 Fedi fact, and bunch uh, to actually get your intent running. There are a few more verticals which I've not listed. Uh, automobile, oil and gas, energy, aeronautical, but all of them have specific aspects which are only domain specific, and then they have, there are common factors which apply to most verticals. So what we learned in the process, when we looked at all of these verticals, we are, as we all saw here also, that there are a few common aspects and then there are what domain specific aspects. In the common ones, there are cross-cutting protocols, X12, Edifact, AS2, AS4, Apply to a lot, um, apply to, a, to many verticals uh, in common. Along with that, trading partner management becomes a concept which is, from, uh, which is pertaining across verticals. Business processes. You need to ensure you are able to define those businesses process so that all, those, all of those mean, individual meaningful flows can actually uh, uh, go through. Also, business rules. You are able to execute. Uh, uh, dynamic, uh, you're able to make uh, dynamic decisions on the fly. Message mediation, uh, you're again talking to multiple partners, multiple systems, or your internal system, so you need to have message mediation in the form of enrichment, validation, transformation, batching. You need to have connectors in place, as we talked about earlier. And then since messages are flowing through, you need to overall manage and monitor your system in, in form of right people having the right access, and so forth. And of course, since you are, you are running on a platform or you're running a system, you don't want it running at full, full capacity all the time. You need to want, you want to uh, dim, uh, scale on demand. These were the common factors of what we observed. And then there are, uh, there are vertical specific uh, aspects, protocol being one among them. HS7 applies predominantly, predominantly to healthcare, SWIFT to banking, RosettaNet to uh, manufacturing and supply chain. And then there are domain-specific integrations. For example, uh, in the automobile, you may want to integrate with Autologica tool or the platform wherein the distributors and suppliers come together to actually say, this is my car inventory for the year or this is my car inventory for the holiday season. In the banking, a sector you want to integrate with Swift. So we as Microsoft started by saying, we'll first cater to the common aspects which pertains to all vert verticals, and we'll provide a story for that. And the story we are providing is here. 
we started with Bill Staples talking about the platform consisting of microservices and it, it, it providing capabilities such as workflow, authentication, uh, tracking, and on-demand scale. On top of that, we heard Alok and Sami talk about mediation capabilities, which, talks, uh, which provides out-of-box connectors, business rules, and message mediation in the form of transformation, validation, and so forth. Using the public APIs of this platform and capabilities built on top of it, we have surfaced out-of-box B2B capabilities. And this include protocols such as AS2, X12, Edifact, uh, capabilities to batch your message when you're talking to your partner, and also the basic concept of trading partner management so that you can uh, effectively manage your, uh, your partners and agreements. Again, the B2B concepts built, again, have, been ex uh, uh, have exposed REST APIs so that higher level uh, integration can be done using them. So you can easily wrap all of this in a, uh, you could consume the REST APIs of all of these individual pieces and build a higher level semantics if you chose to. Now that we have talked about the out-of-box offering from, from Microsoft, let's actually see them in action. So we'll quickly uh, set up a scenario. We'll, I, I'll walk you through the context, and then we'll actually see it in actual demo. So let's say Northwind is a big retailer, and we have Contoso who wants to actually do business with the Northwind. In the usual way of doing things, Contoso would call up Northwind and say, okay, I want to do business with you. How do I do so? Northwind, Northwind would actually reply back saying, okay, I follow this uh, protocol. Say this is a retail industry. I follow, uh, I, communicate mess I communicate over AS2, and the message format I use is X12 for a defect. It will send a document back to Contoso to fill it up. Contoso would fill the information, uh, revert back on email, there would be phone conversations to actually specify few things which have been ambiguous. And then the administrator at Northwind and Contoso would actually go to a system and try to type out the agreement or the contract between the, two, between the both of them. This is a very error-prone process because it's manually being done. And secondly, most of the time you don't have the data, all the data at, at hand to actually uh, finish the contract at one go. So it basically becomes a pain in the back process, so to say. And imagine this being repeated over thousands, hundreds and thousands of suppliers onboarding uh, to Northwind. In the new way of doing things, Northwind can actually surface an onboarding portal where each partner, each supplier who wants to do business with him can actually come and say, these are my settings and please onboard me. Those set, uh, settings go into the Bestock B2B platform, which Northwind uses. So Contoso is coming to the portals, say, uh, saying I want to register. The request goes to Northwind, the administrator. He says, okay, the settings provided looks good. He says, thumbs up, uh, they look okay. The partners and agreements get created into the system. And an acknowledgement uh, email goes back to Contoso saying his registration is successful. This is a one-time registration process. Now they are in the process of doing regular business. So Contoso sends a purchase order uh, to Northwin, and that reaches the backend system of Northwin. Correspondingly, an invoice gets generated and reaches Contoso back. Okay, I'll quickly walk you through a few surfaces of which are uh, playing, uh, working in action here. So this is a portal Northwin has surfaced for any supplier to come and actually onboard to, or who wants to do business with him. So we could provide a bunch of settings here. Once this is done, this will actually post a request to a SharePoint site at Northwind, which the admin is looking at. Once the admin looks at this, looks at the request and says, okay, a workflow gets triggered. So this workflow is looking at SharePoint. This is polling SharePoint to see all approved registrations it will then go and create the uh, partners and the agreements required for that contract. And how this is doing it is we have exposed REST APIs for trading partner management. So this microservice is actually calling those REST APIs so that the partners and agreements get created into the system. And subsequently, an email is sent back to Contoso saying your registration is successful. 
So now let's see this running in action. Uh, we go back to the partner registration page. Uh, Contoso wants to onboard. This is my address. This is my uh, email ID so that I can actually receive the email. My AS2 identity is Contoso and my Edifact identity is 112233. I don't need acknowledgments. I'll go click on, say, register. So this is now posting it to the SharePoint site. And hopefully, we should have a uh, message saying this has been submitted for approval. OK, this is still churning. Let's see what's happening. OK, so has been submitted for approval. So the workflow should be kicking in peace now. since. I'm, I'm doing this demo, I'm auto-approved. Uh, the agreement uh, creation should be happening now, and I should shortly receive an email saying uh, the onboarding is successful. Let's see if the, par the partners and agreements have been created. This is the portal uh, which we have for the trading partner management. It surfaces the partners and the agreements. So if you go to agreements, OK, let me just refresh this. Okay, okay, and we have two partners and two agreements created. Okay, so we have Northwind created as a partner, Contoso created as a partner, and then we have two agreements, one Edifact and one AS2. Let's walk through the AS2 agreement. This says the two partners are Northwind and Contoso. When Northwind is receiving messages. The messages are not signed, not encrypted, and not compressed. And there are no acknowledgments configured. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I have kept it simple, but you could have actually gone and enabled all of the settings, and it should work out. On the send settings, when Northwind is sending messages back to Contoso, again, uh, it's a simple uh, AS2 message with no encryption or signing. But all of this could have been enabled, and this should have gone through fine. Uh, and then an artifact agreement between the two, wherein, uh, again, Nordwin and Contoso are the partners uh, in this contract. On the receive side, it's an artifact order of D10B version, which is quite latest. And then on the send side, it's an it's a invoice, again, artifact D10B version. And I should have received an email that the registration is successful. OK, voila. So we have the registration successful. We saw the partners and agreements created. And in a matter of minutes, Contoso was able to establish a contract with Nordwin, which could have otherwise taken weeks, if not months, to do so. Now let's look at the second part of the demo, wherein they actually do business or message processing with each other. So how we'll do it is, we we'll again go back to the Wolf Group workflow portal. Wherein I have defined an inbound processing and outbound processing. Let me walk you through it. So this is the system at Northwind's end, and it is receiving messages over AS2. And the message which coming in is an edifact message. So these are individual microservices uh, participating in this business process, in this workflow. So AS2 inbound, followed by edifact. Uh, the edifact message will get converted to edifact XML, and finally get posted to SQL. Since the, the schema which uh, my SQL expects is different from what edifact is producing, I have a transformation in between to actually do the data transformation. And my SQL is running on premise. Uh, uh, this is a different box uh, running in the uh, running in the Microsoft Copnet. A purchase order will land here, and a trigger will be initiated, and a corresponding invoice would be generated here. I don't have an invoice created already, and I have three purchase orders, which talks about lap two laptops, each with a unit price of twelve hundred. So an invoice of $2,400 should get created to go back to Contoso. 
once the invoice is uh, generated, I have an outbound processing defined, which actually is now talking to SQL to pull the invoice which was generated, and then transform the message into, into a format which the Edifact microservices, Edifact microservice was expecting. The Edifact microservice takes that XML and actually uh, and converts it to a flat file as per the Edifact standard. And then correspondingly, the Edifact flat file goes out over AS2 back to Contoso. And Contoso is hosting a AS2 website, uh, uh, is hosting a URL which is dropping these messages into an AS2 storage, which I have running in Azure here. So let me refresh this. We have four invoices already. Once we send a message, we should have a fifth invoice. Along with that, we have two purchase orders in three purchase orders already in place. We should see a fourth one landing. I can then go to my Edifact processing. Okay, this has also received the message. So the Edifact processing is also complete on the inbound side. And, and I have a fourth purchase order in the system. Now an invoice should have been generated and my outbound processing should have also kicked in. So I go to my outbound processing Looks like it, 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 it is kicked in. It is still in the running state. The transform is complete. The artifact is complete. And soon the AS2 processing should also be complete. So we go back to my TPM portal. This talks about the fact that the send side processing, which is an invoice, is also complete. And then to AS2 to see that the send side processing is also complete here. We can go to the blob to see if the message has actually reached here. And we have a fifth record. So if you look at the data here, this is uh, an Edifact message. Uh, the, it's an invoice of D10B message version. And you have the value of 2400 uh, in the invoice. So. With this, you just saw how Contoso was quickly able to onboard, or, or, or onboard into a contract with uh, Northwind and was also able to, with two quick business processes, uh, enable the message processing between them. Yes? So the question is, uh, once uh, Contoso came and said, I want to register, how were the corresponding partners and agreements created? So the trading partner management microservice we have surfaces the REST APIs. Yes. So the agreement can also get created. Uh, we have REST APIs for those two. So in the onboarding workflow, which I mentioned, which is this particular guy, this microservice, the create agreement called into the REST APIs. It first actually created Northwind partner, then created the Contoso partner, and then because it knows the uh, part, uh, partner identities of Northwind already, Contoso supplied it through the website. It took all of that and called the REST APIs to actually create an agreement. Uh, the TPM uh, service blade, you say, I want to create a new agreement. You don't have any agreement right now. So you click on one. You pro provide the agreement name and description. And then you choose the protocol type you are interested in. In this example, we are choosing AS2. And then you provide the partners which are actually involved in this contract. In this case, it's Walmart and Microsoft. You provide the receive settings and the send settings. And you have the agreement uh, going for you. So now you have an agreement uh, in place. So to answer your question, it is work in progress. And uh, by the time you see this bits in preview, all of the Silverlight experience would have actually lighted up in the Azure portal experience. Yes? Is your authorization con uh, control between an admin and uh, probably a exchange partner? So in this particular example, for 
we send messages over AS2. So, I mean, the creation of these agreements for the maintenance of that. Okay, so. The portal agreement, okay. So, TPM is a TPM microservice is just another microservice. And all calls made to it goes via central gateway. You can configure the service to say what kind of, which person has uh, access to it or does not have access to it, and what level of access. So this falls into the same microservices category. Each microservice can actually call out what kind of authentication it supports and who can call into it. And tomorrow morning, uh, we have a talk wherein we'll be going deeper into security and authentication of each microservices. And overall, how do you stitch them together and then have security over the, over the entire business process or the workflow? And if I were to enable a solution for a vertical, say insurance, I can consume this platform. And in, for the insurance vertical, I would likely start with a microservice which understands the Accord protocol, can actually integrate with my third party providers and can also talk to the health information exchange system so that I can gather all the right data and actually make a, a knowledgeable uh, guess about what the insurance cost for a person should be. With this, we'll have this, uh, uh, a complete solution for the insurance vertical. Similarly, for the healthcare, you, could, you would actually be consuming this platform, build healthcare-specific uh, microservices or components, and you would actually have a complete solution for the healthcare industry. Similarly, for manufacturing, which could be using RosettaNet and similar protocols. Given this, what what is Microsoft's considerations for what is Microsoft considering to light up in the out of box offerings? We talked about the trading partner management. The trading partner management piece we have right now only understands a few protocols. We want to make it extensible so that in case you, you want to bring in your own protocol, you can actually save data in the same one and actually continue to extend it and use it. Message resubmission was a common factor, a, a common factor across verticals. So we have plans of thinking about it. AS4 is gaining, uh, getting a lot of traction in the market and is getting slowly and slowly more adopted. So that is something which can be provided out of box or a subject matter expert can actually come in and bridge that gap. Manage file transfer, which talks about moving files from one business entity to another in a reliable and performant manner is something we are also thinking about. In case you have something which cuts across verticals and would be applicable to many, do talk to us, we can have the dialogue going on and probably include this or you can light it up in the platform and the community can benefit from it. Uh, with this, I'm done with my session.